Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better shots next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Oliver Queen, the greatest archer in the DC Universe, probably because the DC Universe takes place in relatively modern times, so the fact that he's an archer at all is kind of a weird thing. Oliver. Guns exist. You're rich. Oh, that's why. He's rich. He wants it to be a hundred years ago. Let's start off with our goals for this build first, arrows and bows. I feel like I'm saying those in the reverse order, it feels weird. Next, we need to put a little something special on the arrows. You don't think we're just gonna deal piercing damage. I mean, we're gonna deal a lot of piercing damage, but also other stuff. Finally, we'll get stealthy. I'm more partial to the Robin Hood quippy having fun Oliver Queen, but it's easy to get footage of the we wanna make Batman, but we just didn't Oliver Queen. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep an archer's eye on your multi-classing minimums. Dexterity will be number one. That's the archery skill. This is an archery build. I'm not sure there's another way to do that. Wisdom next. You don't actually need perception as an archer, but wait, this one kind of does. Oh my god, I can officially say this archer needs wisdom. I'm so happy. Charisma after that. Again, I like the quippy fun Oliver. Nothing wrong with edge, though. I'm just gonna give him persuasion instead of intimidation. Follow that up with intelligence. You make your own gear and you're not bad at cracking a cake. Constitution is a bit low, you run away and shoot things, and we'll dump strength, I'm not giving you a kryptonite pill, that's just fighting game writing. You're gonna beat Superman with a kryptonite arrow, that's much less silly. Green Arrow isn't actually an arrow, so we can't make him the arrow race, we'll go for a custom lineage as a compromise though. That'll let you grab the piercer feet instead of sharpshooter because we can use the plus one for our dexterity, you can reroll the damage with a piercing attack once per round, and you can add an extra die of damage to one piercing attack when you critically hit, meaning that you can really hit that bull's eye when you hit that at bullseye. Custom lineage gives you plus two to a stat that'll let you put your dexterity at 18 at level one, which will make you as accurate as possible right away. Now you could start with sharpshooter for more damage, but hey, we can always pick that up later. Grab acrobatics for your skill of choice and the noble background for history and persuasion, but if you want to wear the dark green hood, feel free to swap in intimidation instead. All valid options, I would never judge. We're gonna kick things off as a ranger. I didn't judge you, so don't judge this class. There's nothing wrong with it, other than some abilities being a little situational. You get three skills, that's pretty nice. Investigation, perception, and stealth will help you spot things with your keen eyes and not get caught while you're doing it. Remember those situational things? Favorite enemy else you pick a type of enemy, you'll have advantage on tracking. Humanoids can also give you more languages though, so that could help you handle international business deals. Canny gives you expertise and a skill to double your proficiency bonus with it. I think perception would be my pick that way. Nobody can get the drop on you and we don't need to scoop up the observant feat. Second level rangers get a fighting style and we'll go for archery for plus two to your attack rolls with a ranged weapon. Wait, does Green Arrow do archery? Okay, I think so. I might need to check back on that later. You also get spells, and Hunter's Mark is the best part of Ranger, letting you pick a creature to deal an extra d6 of damage to with your weapon attacks, and you have advantage on tracking them for an hour, even if you're just going to be hitting people from a distance, so you'll probably shoot them down before they can get away. If you want to just shoot a net at someone, and not use a literal net, Entangle creates a 20-foot square of restraining plants that forces strength saving throw on creatures who would like to not be restrained. Then they have to use their action to break out if they fail. Unfortunately, this is also concentration for a minute, so use Hunter's Mark to deal the damage and entangle to keep people at a distance. Just eventually let someone in. Dyna seems nice. Third level rangers can choose a conclave. Hunter rangers get a type of prey. Horde breaker lets you make another weapon attack against a creature within five feet of the person you shot once per turn. You tend to go against whole warehouses of baddies by yourself. This should help you spread the love. Love is code for arrows. If you want an arrow to help you hide from the baddies, fog cloud creates a 20 foot radius of heavily obscuring fog, which will make it harder to shoot, but it'll make it easier to run away. Fourth level rangers get an ability score improvement. We'll grab dexterity to cap it off. It's more damage and more accuracy rather than just more damage, though sharpshooter is a lot more damage, we're gonna get it eventually, archers have to be patient. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you shoot two arrows instead of one. You've heard of pew, but have you heard of pew pew? Pew 2, the most powerful archery Pokemon. You also get second level spells like Magic Weapon, which makes a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adds one to the attack and damage rolls. That's the kryptonite arrow for when Superman goes bad. He'll be in the crypt this evening. What if we had a nice Superman though? Would that be worth trying at all? Just an idea, writers. Six level rangers get roving, giving you a climbing and swimming speed and raising all of your speeds by five, giving you a way to launch yourself up the side of a building with a grappling hook arrow or swim through the ocean with a swimming arrow. Seventh level hunters get defensive tactics. Escape the horde gives creatures trying to hit you with opportunity attacks disadvantage. Ollie isn't supposed to fight Darkseid up close. 
Honestly, I'm not sure he should be along on that mission. He's better with burglars and maybe an arsonist if he's feeling saucy. If you accidentally find yourself on Apocalypse, though, use Pass Without Trace to get the jump on old Laser Eyes, giving creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you plus 10 to their stealth checks for up to an hour depending on your concentration. You could also use it to leave to get Martian Manhunter, Superman, or at the very least, Booster Gold. 8th level Rangers get another ability score improvement or feat. The Tavern Brawler feat isn't very good, so get Sharpshooter instead. That will let you fire at maximum range without disadvantage. You could ignore all but full cover, and you can take a negative 5 penalty from your attack roll to add 10 to the damage rolls instead. You can do this with every attack, so if you've got Magical Weapon up, that's 2d8 plus 32 damage per round, potentially hitting another creature if they're grouped up. Your job is to take out the Parademons, keeping them off of the gods who are fighting. 9th level rangers can learn 3rd level spells, time to get funky arrows with elemental weapon. It's like magical weapon, but instead of 1 extra damage, you get 1d4 extra damage. That's acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, so if you figure out vulnerabilities, you can take out Killer Frost. I bet she's weak to cold damage. 10th level rangers get Nature's Veil, letting you turn invisible as a bonus action until the start of your next turn, an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus. Rangers have so many good methods of running away, almost as though they're supposed to fight at a range, er. You also get Tireless, letting you give yourself 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier and temporary HP, an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus, and you can remove an effect of exhaustion on short rests. Those watchtower mattresses can be a little stiff, it can interrupt a REM cycle. Maybe Bruce should spend more on furnishing, and less on bat spatulas, or whatever. 11th level hunters get a form of multi-attack. Volley lets you attack as many creatures as you want within a 10-foot radius. That can be quite a few people, and you'll be dealing 1d8 plus 1d4 plus 15 damage to each of them with an elemental weapon. Now you can focus fire or do some crowd control. If you want to do that a little simpler, Conjure Barrage lets you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 60-foot cone. Dealing 3d8 piercing damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. It's a much bigger area, and it's guaranteed damage. Definitely worth the spell slot. 12 level rangers get another ability score improvement. Bump your wisdom for better conjured barrages. You need sharp eyes to shoot a thousand arrows in 60 seconds. Well, at least if you want to shoot them accurately. 13th level rangers can learn 4th level spells, and I don't really want any though. Flame arrows gives you 12 pieces of ammo that will deal an extra d6 of fire damage, which is more than the d4 from elemental weapon. Why does fire get special treatment? Because Wizards of the Coast likes fire damage. Obviously. Look at fireball, or delayed blast fireball, or meteor fireball. This is arrow fireball. 4th level rangers get vanish, letting you hide as a bonus action and you can't be tracked by non-magical means. That means you can even hide from Batman, as long as he hasn't put a GPS in your cereal. He definitely put a GPS tracker in your cereal. This is uncomfortable. 15th level rangers get superior hunter's defense, like uncanny dodge, letting you reduce incoming damage by half as a reaction as long as you can see your attacker, which should help you stay in the fight with the gods among us, even with your low HP. Superman has been looking pretty sus. Lightning Arrow should handle him well, since it's magical. This is one of his weaknesses, after all, letting you make your next ranged attack deal 4d8 lightning damage and force a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 10 feet of the target, dealing 2d8 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. So, Lightning Arrow is one big arrow, Flame Arrow is a bunch of smaller arrows, and if you just want a whole hour of extra good arrows, Elemental Weapon is your option. 16th level Rangers get another ability score improvement. You can use it on your Wisdom for more accurate Lightning Arrows or Volleys. Specifically, Conjured Volleys, not Hunter's Volleys. 17th level Rangers can learn 5th level spells, like Conjured Volley. That forces a Dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 40-foot radius, 20-foot high cylinder, dealing 8d8 piercing damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. 40-foot radius is absolutely massive. That's a bursting arrow that should blot out the sun and hopefully take out all 300 of those Spartans, so nobody asks me to build anyone from that garbage movie. We'll bounce over to Fighter now for the last little bit here, letting you grab a fighting style. We don't really need one, so it's weird that we're here, but defense will add one to your AC while you're wearing some sweet leather. You and Dinah do have something in common, and it's an enthusiasm for fine leather goods. You also get Second Wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Take a deep breath, and the fighter level will make sense in a second. Specifically, a second level because second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. With a fifth level elemental weapon, you could volley to hit 12 targets per action, dealing 24 d8, 48 d4, plus 360 damage in a single round. If all of the enemies are grouped up, of course, but 552 damage in a single round is Meteor Swarm levels of damage. Our cap zone is the third level of fighter, and I'm not here for maneuvers, gigantism, eldritch knightery, or even arcane archery. I'm here for champion. I'm here for improved critical, to let you critically hit on a 19 or a 20, because this build is best at crowd control, and if you can get between 2 and 12 shots per round every single turn, I want you to have twice as many opportunities to make everyone at the table put their snacks down and go, HOLY HECK YOU GOT ANOTHER CRIT! Oh, and remember the piercer feat? That means you're not adding one extra d8, you're adding two. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. 
First, you and Legolas should switch jobs, because your high-tech scatter arrows could protect Helm's Deep single-handedly. Volley, Conjure Volley, and Horde Breaker all mix together to wipe down floods of enemies in a single round. You're also very consistent to add Focus Fire with 2d8 plus 30 damage before you've even applied any of your fantastic bonuses to your arrows, and ways to make sure that every shot is magical to take down more fantastical foes. Finally, you're very good at running away. Fighting up close might be how the rest of the league does things, but that's a bad idea. So do most of their enemies. For weaknesses, your special arrows don't mix and match. You can only have one concentration spell up at a time for one fancy shot at a time. Your constitution is also pretty low. Thankfully, you've got martial hit die to keep you from having too low of HP, but if someone hits you with a light breeze, you could drop concentration. Speaking of breezes, you only do ranged attacks, and there are spells that can fully neutralize that with literal gusts of wind. But Wind builds are even worse than ranger builds, so no DM will make you fight someone with wind wall. I forgot that spell exists, and knowing spells is literally my job. Take down all the small soldiers in the first turn, then take out the big bad with the rest of the squad. Hopefully they thank you for the crowd control, otherwise Beetle won't be the only one looking blue. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more, we make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.